to TFI Cat Tips. We're doing drone templates today. Uh, I've done very little on drones on the channel so far. I think I've done like a grand total of two videos on drones so far. That's because they're boring as balls, but they're essential. They, they are. It would be great if you could just hand a model over to somebody and say, "Oi, make this." But no, these people, these people, they need drones. So we need to do drones. So I'm going to try and stay on point. I'm going to try and stay on point when I'm. Talking about templates, right, your title block and whatnot inside Inventor, it's going to be easy to sort of deviate off and start looking at other things like line styles and text styles and stuff and dimension styles. But I'm going to avoid all that. This score, this could end up being half a day's worth of a video and nobody wants that. So we're going to stick with how to create templates. What am I talking about when it comes to templates, right? We're using Inventor 2016, right? And pretty much nothing's changed in like five or six years. So it doesn't matter what version of Inventor you're using. There might be little subtle differences here and there, but generally this is going to be pretty much the same for the last five or six years and moving forward as well. Can't see them changing much. But the templates that we're talking about are the icons you see when you click new, right? These ones here, these are templates. The starting points for new parts and assemblies and drones. And all they are, right, all these are, are just empty models, empty IPT, empty IAM, empty drones, with nothing in them. Yeah, they're saved into a folder, and then Inventor uses them just as a starting point for a new model. The idea being that you could, if you wanted to, open up the template, standard.ipt, you could open that up explicitly, and then save in some, like, materials and appearances and you know textures and stuff same for drones you could open the drones up explicitly and then change the text styles and dimension styles and whatever and then when you start a new drone all those things that you've preset in the template will be in your new drones moving forward it's not the best way of working it's not the best way of doing it but you can do that if you wanted to please also note the, the process that I'm going to show you here is not what you would do in a drone office right this is just assuming you are a student or you're just working by yourself at home you would do a completely different process if you're working in a drawing office. So this is not intended for that. But you could, I guess, kind of understand some bits and apply that to drawing offices. The, the physical act of creating the title block that I'm going to show you is sort of generic, but the, the, the location of them and stuff is different for drawing offices. But hopefully, hopefully you'll be able to realize that when you see what I'm about to do. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the templates that Inventor gives you by default and we're going to move them somewhere. We're going to copy them somewhere else. So you're not messing about with the default ones that Inventor gives you out of the box, just in case you screw them up. So we need to find these ones here, these default templates, and copy them. And how do you find them? Right, well, let's, uh, let's well, that's the folder path there, but I'll, uh, we'll go over to projects. And assuming you've not dicked about with anything, you should just see default project. And then if you go to your project settings, you've got folder options down here, and then there's templates equals default. And this is the setting that tells that tells Inventor, when I'm working on this project here, I want you to look at this folder to get the templates from. So the idea being, you can have multiple different projects if you want, looking at multiple different templates folders. So you could have different templates per client, per, per project, per product, whatever. That's the idea. Uh, you don't have to, you could just stick with the default one. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to the default folder. So see users, public documents, Autodesk, Inventor 2016, Templates, and that folder is here. Right, so there's the templates folder. If we go into that, there's the templates. That, Like I said, that's all they are. Inventor just looks at this folder and then lists the files that it sees in here in the file new dialog box. That's how it works. Uh, and the units we're using, I'm English, as you can tell by my silly accent. I'm English, so I'm using the, the proper units, millimeters. But that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter for the purposes of what we're doing here. It doesn't matter which units you're using. But we're going to go back one folder, and then I'm going to take this templates folder, and then we're going to copy that to the clipboard. All right, back to Inventor, and I'm going to create a new project. So I'm assuming I'm going to do some work, which I don't do often, but we're going to do some work. So we're going to create a new project, new single user project, and then let's just say this is going to be, I don't know, TFI template video project, something like that. I don't know. But it's going to create the project at this folder path here in my documents folder and then we're going to click finish uh yes okay and then uh, let's go over to that folder all right so here it is this is my documents inventor there's that folder go into there there's my template video project and then i'm going to paste the templates folder into there so i've now got a local copy of the templates folder in my project area so i can now dick about with the contents of this 
and not worry about it cocking up the defaults of Inventor. So we're safe, we're safe. The next thing you've got to do is go back over to Projects and then go to Folder Options and then tell this project to look at that new template folder rather than the default one. That's pretty simple. You just right click on that, go to Edit, click Browse, and then Browse to, uh, it's not Downloads, it's Documents, Inventor, Template Video Project, Templates. Okay. And what it'll do, once it's once you click uh, outside of this browse path, it'll change it to a relative path. So it'll say dot backslash templates. And that just tells Inventor that the templates folder is underneath your project, you know, the highest project directory. So it's a relative path. Click save and then click done. And then that's it. Now when you click new, that path there is now C users, new documents, blah, 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 blah. And that's just verification that we're now using a different templates folder, even though the templates are actually at this point the same. Right. So we've got one new copy of the templates. The next thing we need to do is look at the drawing template itself. So there's a, there's the little, there's a little bit to explain here. Uh, you have to bear with me, but it needs to be done. So we've got two different drawing templates, right? We're gonna and we're ignoring the models for for this video because, like I said, this is a drawing templates video. There's two different drawing templates, standard.dwg and standard.idw. Now, anybody that started using Inventor in the last couple of years might not be aware what the differences are between the two. So I'll explain that. There is no difference. <laughs> There's absolutely no difference at all. Well, there is subtle differences, but IDW is, you can probably guess, it's the same format as IPT and IEM. That's short for invent, IPT is inventor part, IEM is inventor assembly, IDW duh, is inventor drawing. IDW, up until around five or six years ago, possibly slightly longer, I don't know when they exactly did it, IDW was at one point the only drawing type you could create in Inventor. Then, like I said, about five, six, seven years ago, Autodesk decided, hang on, hang on, stop it, hold a second. We're the kings of AutoCAD, and we've, we own the DWG format. Wouldn't it make sense? Wouldn't it make some sense if Inventor could create DWG drawings and then you can share your drawings with AutoCAD users and open up these Inventor drawings and AutoCAD viewers? Yes, it would be, wouldn't it? And that's what they did. So they then introduced the DWG format into Inventor. You can create Inventor DWGs. So you might be thinking, well, right, fine. Why keep the IDW format? Well, there is no reason other than there's probably about, I don't, I'm not going to guess numbers, I have no idea of numbers, I'll just be purely speculating, but there are a lot of companies out there who have used Inventor for 10 plus years and they've got a huge back catalogue of IDWs that they'd created before you could create the DWG drawing. So Autodesk, thankfully, they've got the, the, the nouse about them to say, well, let's not remove that option from them. You don't want to have a mixed catalogue of drawings. So anybody that's previously been creating IDW drawing format, they can still do that. They can still keep creating IDWs if they want to. So we've now got two. We've got IDW and DWG. So forgetting all that, moving forward, you're a new user. Which one should you use? Go for the DWG. Functionally, there's absolutely no difference between the two. You don't get any more or less options, functionality between one or the other, right, when it comes to physically creating a drawing. There's no difference at all, other than if you do create an Inventor DWG, you can open that up in other applications like AutoCAD and like AutoCAD viewers, right? You can't do that with IDW. IDW is just native to Inventor. You can't open up an IDW in AutoCAD or any other AutoCAD viewers. Other than that, there's pretty much sort all difference in the past you do the, because they're different file formats you you do get some unique bugs to one format or the other like for example the dwg file saving it as another format exporting it to a pdf you might get bugs in that whereas you wouldn't get that in the idw but from a functional point of view you get there's there's i wouldn't let that stop you using a dwg format so for the purposes of this video we're going to stick with the dwg file format right right so what happens when you create a new drawing, right? Well, you go new, you select the DWG format, and then you click create. Inventor then spawns a new drawing from that template, and it says, here you go. Here's your drawing. Get cracking, son. And you're like, right. All right, this drawing border is bobbins. It's awful. It, it really is, actually. It really is bad. It's functional. It does the job, but it's very basic and very minimalistic. So what we're going to do is create our own. And 
to do that, I guess, I suppose, I need to explain what the contents of this are. So let's shut this down. And what we're going to do is open up the template itself. So we're going to click open, and then we're going to browse to our templates folder. And then if you've decided, right, because we're using a separate templates folder, if you've decided to go with the DWG format and you're not going to use IDW, just delete the IDW template. Yeah, just delete the IDW template, and then when you click new, it won't list it anymore. So we're going to go back to the templates folder, open templates, go to the standard DWG. If you want, if you want to be really careful, you can keep that one and then create a copy and then call this like, I don't know, you know, my TV, my title block, something like that, if you want to. Or you could just edit the, the style because it's safe to edit that one because this is a copy of the original. We've still got the original folder back in the default location, so it's safe to edit this one. But either way, we can open up this template explicitly, click open, and we can get cracking. All right. The next thing I need to explain is the structure of the title block, right? Because if you've come from an AutoCAD background, there's a little bit of confusion here. There's a little bit of confusion. Because in AutoCAD, if you, if you were to say to somebody, edit the title block or edit the border, they would think, and rightly so, that you're referring to this entire thing on the sheet, right? The, the outline, the grid, the bit down at the bottom right. That is the title block. That is the border. It's all one entity. That's not the case in Inventor. Within Inventor, this outer border here, this outer rectangle that goes around the sheet of the paper, that is a completely separate entity to this bit here. So within Inventor, this outer ring is called, well, it's not a ring, it's a rectangle. The outer rectangle is called the border, and then this bit here is the title block. So the border and the title block are actually two completely separate entities, and they are created and managed separately. And you see that in your browser on the left-hand side. So in the browser, we've got sheet one, which is what we're looking at here. That has got two instances underneath it. We've got default border and we've got ISO. And that just confirms that there, the default border is the outer rectangle. And then this here is your title block, which is this bit here. If you were to right click on ISO and then delete it, you'll see you're deleting the title block. If you were to right click on the border and delete that, you've deleted the border. Okay, don't panic. We haven't lost it, right? That That's just, it's just removed from the current sheet. We've still got it saved in the drawing. So the next thing we need to look at is the drawing resources. So what you've got here on the browser on the left-hand side is the drawing resources folder. Now, this is like a container where you create your title blocks and your borders and you store them as a resource to use them in the future. So we can expand drawing resources. Uh, we're going to ignore blocks, sketch symbols, and sheet formats today, right? Sheet formats is kind of related, but I'm going to create a separate video on sheet formats because it would just make this one far too long. But we've got borders and title blocks. Now, this is where you can create your own borders and your own title blocks and store them in here for future use. So when we expand borders and title blocks, there's the default border and there's ISO. And you think, about it, didn't we just delete them? Didn't we just delete them? No, we removed them from the current sheet but they're still stored in the resources folder to be used in the future. The idea being you can create a bank, like a, a collection of borders and a collection of title blocks. And then whenever in the future you create a new sheet, you can pick and choose which border and which title block you use on your future sheets. So that's the idea. So the title block, for example, if you were to, if you were to want to place a new title block on your sheet, you would go into the drawn resources area, you'd expand title blocks, and you'd say, right, I want to use this one here. You'd right click on it, and then you'd insert it, and it'll place it onto the sheet. Same for the border, right click on the border, insert the drawn border, click OK, and it puts it back on. You can see it's now added these two resources to the sheet. And then you can just come back to here, and delete, and then delete. So that's the idea, that's how it works. That's how the resources work, and that's how it places them onto your sheet. Right, the next thing we're gonna look at is how to create our own, All right? We're gonna start with the border. Right click on the border folder, and then define a new border. You can define a new zone border if you want to. A zone border, if we just right click on this, insert border and click okay. A zone border is a border with these grids on. They're, they're not essential, right? Some drawn officers want them, some clients want them, some people don't care either way. But the idea behind the zone is that when you're talking to somebody over the phone or you know over email, you can pinpoint a zone on the drawing so you can say, right, there's a problem with zone B4, for example. So you go, right, where's B? There's B, move along, ah, there's four. So the drawn problem is somewhere in this region here. 
So that's the idea behind a zone border. And then you've got these arrows here at the top, left, right, and bottom. Those are just fold lines. It's for when the drawing's been printed, and you can fold it. it just It's marking the exact center point of the sheet of paper. So they're not essential. Uh, we're going to right-click on that and delete that off again. Right, so we're going to create our own. Right-click on borders, and then you're going to define a new zone border. And what it does is it takes you into the sketch environment. You've got to draw your own. <laughs> You've got to draw your own. I know, I know. We're going to keep it simple in this. You can make this as complicated or as simple as you want to. It's entirely up to you. Uh, you can also paste stuff in from AutoCAD as well, because AutoCAD is uh, is is interlinked somehow in some ways to Inventor. It's made by the same people. Thankfully, uh, there's obviously, I'm saying thankfully, a lot of hard work, I'm sure, has gone into it, but you can copy and paste entities between AutoCAD and Inventor. Um, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to keep this simple. So your drawing board is just going to be the outer rectangle. So we're going to keep that simple. Click rectangle. And then let's just draw a square or a rectangle like that. Right click and OK. Alrighty then. <laughs> the next thing we need to think about is the paper size, right? What we're looking at here is an A3 sheet of paper. By default, that's the, the sheet of paper you get. But what if, what if I decide I want to have an A1 bit of paper? Is my rectangle going to stay the same size? Do I need to create a different border for like A3, A1, A0? Do I need to have like four or five different borders and title box? No. No, you don't know. If you want to be an absolute genius, if you want to be a bro, you can link your border to the paper size. And it's not as difficult as you might think. In the sketch that we're working on, Inventor gives you these little points here at the four corners of the sheet. What you can do is you can constrain your border to the points on the paper. And all you do after you've drawn your rectangle is click dimension from here to here. And then just say, this is essentially your margin. So we can say, right, we're going to have a five mil margin. And then you, it's a bit, bit, bit tedious, but it's just a one-off thing. And click another dimension here, link that back to there. And then we can come from here to here and link that back to there. And then finally from here to here and then link that back to there. Okay, so now our, our border is now linked to the corners of the paper at a five mil margin. Click OK. So if you think, well, actually five mils may be a little bit too small, you can edit that and then you can say, well, let's make it seven mil. And because all the dimensions are linked together, It'll update them all, and you've just saved yourself a little bit of time. Now, another thing you can do if you want to at this point, because this is the border, you can save and create other entities around the outside. In fact, you can create whatever you want in here, but this is meant to be just the border, so you're not meant to draw the title block in this resource. This is just purely the outer border. But you can put, like, bits of text up here if you want to. That's what some companies do. They'll have, like, you know, superseded or do not scale written up here at the top. Uh, you know, do not scale, something like that. Uh, click OK. And what I would do, because your border potentially is going to scale up and down depending on the sheet size, I would constrain this bit of text to that corner as well. So just, you know, put a dimension on here and say that's always going to be, you know, 9 mil from there and, you know, 2 mil, something like that. So it's not going to move. And then finish the sketch. Once you've done that, it's going to say, right, well, you've created a border, son. You've created a border. Well done. Well done. Give it a name. So we'll call this uh, my border. You don't have to put a sheet size in it because it's going to dynamically scale based on the sheet size. You don't have to put A3 or A1 in here. So we'll just say this is going to be called my border. Click save. Where's it gone? Ah, where's it gone? Well, it's just it's saved in your resources. It hasn't been used yet. To test it, we've got sheet one active. Right click on my border. It should be in the resources area and then click insert. And there it is looking awesome. And there it is. To test its dynamic scaling, you can right click on your sheet, right? Just expand it. You can see there's my border there just for clarification. Right click on your sheet, edit sheet, and then you can change the size to a one, for example. Click OK. Oh, look at that. Isn't that juicy? <laughs> Isn't that lovely? There you go. Do not scale. There's the sheet. Still got seven mil margins. Just take a look at your margins. If you think it looks about right, then you can leave it. If you want to edit the margins, you can go back. If you want to edit the border, you don't edit it in the sheet. You can, but it's not best. Just go to your resources. Just do it from one place. Edit my border, and then you can say, right, well, maybe seven mil was a bit too big. Let's change that down to six. Finish sketch. Yes. And then it'll update that border on any sheets that it's been used in. Looking gorgeous. It's looking good. Right, we're going to go back to the sheet and we're going to delete my border from sheet one. And that's now saved 
in the borders resources, right? You can't delete the default border, by the way, that has to stay there. Uh, but you can, you, if you want to, if you do cock up your border, you can delete that off if you want to recreate it again. But we're just going to leave it there, right? The next thing we need to create is the title block, right? This is where it gets a little bit, it's not tricky, but it's fiddly. It's fiddly. What I'm going to do now is show you a title block from a real company, just so you know kind of what a, t a proper title block should look like. So this company here has changed the background of their sheet to blue. Obviously, it doesn't print blue. Obviously, it's just for visual purposes. And the way they've done that is in tools and document settings and sheet is you change that sheet color. And the guy who created this template, he thinked, he thinked, is that, that's not even a word. He thought that it was just a better contrast, blue on yellow than sort of white on black. I don't know, did it years ago, it's sort of stuck. Uh, but it obviously doesn't print blue. But this is what a proper title block should look like. So we've got down at the bottom, I've deleted all references to the company, obviously, because, you know, data protection and all that sort of stuff. But this is what it's got in, like date, who designed it, checked and approved, a few notes, the company name down here, sheet one of one, drawing, revision number, size, and then like a revision block here where you can add in like revision lines. So all of this here is the title block. And then this outer ring here is the border. Uh, this yellow line here is not the border, that's the edge of the sheet, that there is the border. So what we need to create next is this region here. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of sketch entities in there, and I'm not going to create this many in this video. This is just showing you what you would need to create to get a title box. So it takes some time to do, but obviously it's just a one-off thing. You spend your time doing it once, and then that should be it. You then use that title block hundreds, thousands of times in the future after you've done it once. So it's worth the time investing to create it properly in the first instance. Let's shut this title block down and back to our sheet. Right, so this is my title block. We need to create it. So we're going to go to the title block drawn resources, right click on title blocks and then define a new title block. And then it does what it did with the border. It takes you into the sketch environment where you can create your own title block. And it's like, right, oh my God, where to start? Do I need to start it down at the bottom right? Do I need to draw it like in place? No, no, you don't have to do any of that. And there's, there's quite a lot of intelligence built into this. You can just start by drawing your title block floating in the middle of the paper, right? Trust me on that, it will work. So we're gonna create a rectangle and we're gonna create the title block. Say that's gonna be the outer boundary of the title block. You can then place dimensions on it to make it the right size. This is gonna be trial and error to start with because you're not gonna be entirely sure how big you want the title block. You're not gonna be sure on how much text you're going to have in it. You're not going to be sure on where the text's going to be. So you're going to be fiddling with this quite a lot. So what I would say is don't over constrain it, right? Don't go nuts with the constraints because you'll just cause yourself problems later on. If you do need to tweak a little column or like a little cell, you want to move it slightly. If you've got constraints all over the place, you're going to cause yourself a few problems, but it, everything's fixable, but it's just, you know, one of those things. So we can create dimensions on this. We can say, well, it's going to be, you know, 370 mil. Uh, long, it's going to be, I don't know, 70 mil high. That's maybe a bit too small. Let's make that 80. Uh, and then you can start putting divider lines in and text lines in, you know, the right, well, this is going to be, you know, we're going to have one column here. We're going to have another one here like that. And then we're going to have this coming across here and then another one going across there. And then you just start building it up like that. Text is pretty simple. You just put a bit of text in like this. And then if this is going to be, uh, I don't know, say, for example, the date, right? You'd have... A date header and then the size there's no real rules for the size obviously working in millimeters here but generally all the drawing offices that I've worked in like in the title block most headers and values tend to be 2.5 mil and text that needs to be emphasized things like part numbers and descriptions tend to be 3.5 mil so we can highlight that we can say well I'm gonna make this 2.5 mil and then that's gonna be the header uh, the next thing I want to do is the actual date value. So you would just control C, control V, just paste that, move it down. You want this to be neat and tidy. So you can again, use your constraints and say, well, you know, make this horizontal, uh, vertically aligned to that and double click the date and then delete that out. Right. So for things like dates, you can link system properties and I properties into your title block as well. And this is where you start to be an absolute genius. So you can drop this option down here and you can say, right, properties of the drawing uh date where which which one create a date uh which date is it creation date there you go add in and then okay yeah you can do that that'll do and then 
expand this out. This here, this little green, these green grips, these are the, it's like a text box. It's the extent of the text. So you can just drag that out so that the text never goes further than the, the cell that you're working in. So obviously if that's down there, if this, if you were typing information in here, the text is now free to sort of expand out into this green box. You don't want that. You can also right click on the text and enable the text box and that'll show you the physical extents of the text, but this doesn't print. You don't see this outside of the sketch environment. So it's safe to do that. And then you would click finish sketch. Once you've finished your title, I'm going to come back into this. I'm just showing you how to test it. Click finish sketch and then you give your title block a name. So we're going to call this my title block. Click save and it'll vanish from the sheet saved into the resources folder. So once you've got your title block finished, the first thing you would normally do is insert your border and then insert your title block. Now watch what happens. It will automatically snap the, the title block to the bottom right hand corner of the border. It's just clever like that. It's got built in intelligence to look at the extents and put it in the right place. Look at the date. Uh, this Unfortunately, this template was created in 2002, so that's the date that it's going to put in there. Uh, I, uh, I'm not entirely sure if it's going to use the right date when we spawn a new template from this template, a uh, new drawn from this template, but we'll, we'll look at that when we, we'll get to it. Uh, we can change the property that it references if we need to, so that's not really the end of the world. But you can see the cell's too big for this for this date uh, entry, so we can move these up in the, in the template, uh, title block template, fiddle with it, get it the right size. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the title block created. If you want to change the location, some companies might want the board, uh, the title block down at the bottom left. You can go to the sheet, edit the sheet. And you've got this orientation option here. You can click the bottom left and it'll automatically snap the title block to the bottom left. So it really is quite intelligent like that. Uh, and then we can just edit that and put it back to the right place, which is over there on the right hand side. Right, let's just delete these off. Delete and then delete and then let's go back to my title block and edit that again. Right, so clearly the, the cells were too big. So you can just use, you know, drag and drop to move them up. Or you can put dimensions. And then, you know, if you want to properly firm it up. But this is where it starts to get a bit weird when you start putting in dimensions. Because it's not, it's not like a proper full constrained sketch. So when you do place dimensions and then you edit the values, things around the thing that you dimension will start to move and... Things will start to get disjointed, but you'll you'll figure that out when you start working with it. Right. Another thing you can do is something called a prompted entry. Now, these prompted entries are really popular within title blocks. So what we can do is go to text, put a text box in here, for example, and drop this down and then put prompted entry in. Enter prompt for field. Right. And this is where you can put in something that you want to be prompted to enter when you create the drawing. So we can say, uh, I don't know, uh, checked check by okay and then copy and paste and then we can put this over here this is a really messy title block but you know whatever uh, approved by but these are prompted entries right what a prompted entry will do finish sketch save that when you insert your title block you'll get a prompt it's prompting you to enter text into those areas so the prompted entry that we typed checked by approved by that appears as the property field the value is whatever you type in. So check by NC, approved by MM, whatever. Click OK, and then you'll see NC and MM in the prompted entry area. Most title blocks in the real world are full of prompted entries. That's how people are prompted to enter stuff into the title block. So that's that's a good place to, to start for creating your own title block. Prompted entries, good thing, good thing. But any prompted entries that you've created will appear underneath your title block on your sheet as a field text. It doesn't really make much sense field text, but right click on that. If you select edit field text, it allows you, it allows you to then change the prompted entries so you can you know put in a different value and that'll update the prompted entry. So that's that, that's a prompted entry, right? The final thing which is worth going over is the uh, linking to model properties, right? This is, again, where you start to go that extra level when you start to be a bro. Go that one step further and do it properly. All uh, right, no, I don't want to edit. I don't want to end, uh, insert that, right? Let's go back to my title block and edit it. Right, the linking it to the model properties is something you would do for things like the description of the drawing and the part number of the drawing, and to some degree, the revision of the drawing. So we're gonna create a new bit of text, right? And just put that up here. And on this drop down, you've got the option to select properties dash model. If you select that, you can then drop down and select I properties 
from your model. Hang on a minute though, we don't have a model here. No, we're predicting the models that we're going to use in the future. So you can say, right, whenever this drawing is used, whenever this title block is created, and I place a view of a model onto this drawing, I want the title block to read from that model its part number. Then you click this little X, that drops it into there, click OK. So whenever this title block is used and a drawing view is placed, this field here will read the part number of that model. And that's really useful. Again, standard title blocks are full of these. In fact, I'll tell you what, let's go back to this other title block here. This is the real world title block. And what I'll do is go to the Drawn Resources folder, title blocks. This was set up a long time ago. This is wrong. This shouldn't be the case, but it just is. Uh, let's delete that off. Let's delete that off. Right. Uh, A3 title block. Edit. Right. This is full of prompted entries and links to model properties. So there's the description. Properties of the model. Description shown here. Uh, part number. We've just done that. We've done the exact same thing on our title block. And this is it used to effect in the real world. Part number. Uh, this is actually a 5 mil size. So it's sort of emphasized quite a lot. Properties of the model. Part number. We've got things like revision number. Properties of the model. Uh, properties of the drawing revision number. That's company dependent. That is company dependent. Properties of the model or properties of the drawn revision number. And anything else in here? Uh, scale. Uh, yeah, mass. You can show the physical properties of the model. There's the standard properties of the model, but you've also got physical properties of the model, mass. So it'll list the actual mass of the model in the drawing. So you can go nuts with this, right? I, I'd love to go over every single one of them, but I'm not going to go nuts with it. Just test it. Play around with all the different options that you've got. All right, let's go back to my title block. Okay, so there's the part number, couple of prompt entries, and uh, the properties of the drawing date. Final thing I should probably show you how to do is insert an image into the title block because you're going to want your company logo in there somewhere. So whilst you're editing your title block, select Insert Image, drag a box where you want the image to be, select your company logo. Really important this bit, really important. Untick this. Never link your images in your title block. I'm not going to explain why, but you're on a really bad time. You have a really bad time if you link them. If just if if you lose the image, your title block's just all full of bits, and that image is easy to lose. So if you untick link, what it does is it, emb it embeds the image into the drone. So you want to make sure your image is pretty small. It do you don't want to have like a massive bitmap, right? Just have a small PNG or a small JPEG, and then untick the link box. Click open, and there's your image inserted into the title box. You just you know move that around and grab the grips and it's gonna let you come on there we go so you can drag that around you can make that as big or as small as you want it to be and yeah that's pretty much it let's click finish sketch do I want to save the edits yes and then what you would then want to do is save this don't forget we're not creating a drone here we're still creating a title block template so this is, you don't create any views in here we're just pre-creating stuff to use in the future so we're gonna shut this down I shut this one down and we're back to bog standard right so how do we use our template well you click new and there's my tb my title block double click that and it's now spawning a new drawing from our title block notice it's up here we've got drawn two and in our drawn resources folder under borders there's my border under title blocks there's my title block and we can now say well i want to create a new border and i want to create a new title block insert there's your prompted entries checked by me uh, approved by you okay and there's our image that is a horrible looking title block but obviously I'm not going to create a nice neat and tidy title block in a tutorial that would take far too long right so just to test the part number what we want to do is create a base view of course I don't have a bloody drawn let's create a new part new IPT I need a bit of geometry I suppose preparation is key my friends preparation is key and let's do this and then let's save that into here part one that'll do of course of course part one will need a meaningful part number that would help so let's put a part number in here of a b one two three four five dash zero zero one so that's our part number click ok save that and then we need to create uh, yes the date has worked so the creation date that we used before has recognized the date the new drawing was created 6th of January 2016, that's all good, that's all good. Uh, base view, browse, let's pick uh, workspace part one, and then okay, and then there's our part number linked because we link properties of the model 
part number. All right, that's it. That's how you do it. That's how you create your own title block, your own border, and then link model properties, prompted entries, and the like. It's a, I know, I know, it's a bit of a dry topic. It's a bit boring, it's long-winded. There's probably f quite a few things that I've missed as well that I'll think in the future, oh, should I should have mentioned that, but I mean, where do you stop? It's, it is quite an intricate topic, creating your own title block. You can go really far with it. You can do some really clever things with it, or you can keep it really basic, which is what we've done here. Uh, and what I would recommend that you do as well, if let's just open up our title block again. If you've only really got one border and one title block, in your title block, in your template, just pre-place them on sheet one. So my border, insert, my title block, insert. Pre-place them on sheet one. Save your title, uh, save, save your template, and then whenever you create a new title block from that template, you're still gonna get prompted for your prompted entries. You know, me and you click OK. And it's just gonna create the drawn all the time. Always, it's gonna create that with your border and your title block pre-placed on sheet one. It saves you doing it each time. Uh, and you only really do that when you've got one uh, one option, All right? Let's go to sheet, uh, edit the sheet, change that to A3 just to make sure it's gonna automatically adjust. Yes, it is. Right, so this is where you need this, I guess, fiddle a bit. That's an A3 sheet. Clearly, this one was far too big. So we would need to just make sure that we lower the size of that title block uh, for an A3 sheet. And uh, yeah, that's when, when you looked at that other title block, when you saw we had A1, A0, A3, A4, different title blocks, that's because the person who created those templates wasn't happy with the way this the title block sized itself up based on different sheets, but it's up to you. It's up to you. Now that you know the structure of it, you can then play around with that to your heart's content. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it there. I think that should be enough to get you going uh, on creating your own title block. Uh, if you liked that video, if it was helpful, please press like, subscribe, share it around, share the love, and I shall see you next time. Toodle pip.